welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and this time I'm going to be going over how you can create a system that I like to call T-Pronounce using a sequence to sequence LSTM model built in TensorFlow. Let's begin. Now, what will this application do? Well, put, it, put simply, this application will allow you to enter a word, any word, even a non-dictionary English word, uh, into a, an LSTM, uh, and the LSTM will tell you how to pronounce this word uh, based off of the pronunciations of other words. Uh, so what I do is there's actually a database online called the CMU Pronouncing Set. Uh, and so essentially this is created by the Carnegie Mellon University uh, and it is a data set which contains uh, the actual uh, American English words uh, and then their pronunciation in American English accent. Uh, and so this pronunciation, uh, of course, uses uh, uses uh, specific uh, uses the specific sort of syntax, which I'll be talking about in just a moment. Uh, and let me explain exactly how the system works. Of course, we begin with a data set, and this data set contains hundreds of thousands of individual English words and their pronunciations attached to them. Uh, and so this is called the CMU pronouncing data set. Okay, so we've got the data set. Now, after you've got the data set, it has to go through some processing, and I'll tell you about this processing in just a moment in the Mac part. After your data goes through some processing, you're ready for it to actually go into something called Translate. But what is Translate? Well, put simply, Translate is an example that TensorFlow already has for you uh, on how to build sequence-to-sequence -sequence LSTM models. This is the way it works. By default, what this model will do is it will, I mean, if I actually just uh, create a little boundary here, which will contain uh, the Translate system. So this is the regular vanilla TensorFlow Translate system that they already have for you. What this does is it takes a bunch of text in English and it takes that exact same text but in French. And it'll feed it into a sequence to sequence model. Now the sequence to sequence model will then train on that data and then you can actually pass it some input like, hello, and it'll output something like, bonjour. Oh, bonjour. Like that. In fact, okay. But the thing is, there are a few limitations with this system, because the thing is, this was built for language translation, but we, what we want to do is have the system learn how to pronounce English words and not actually translate from English to French. And so I've actually gone ahead and made a few modifications to the system. I basically use almost the same code, and what it'll do is the new translate system will actually take so the translate that was made for T pronounce. Now this will actually go ahead uh, and take some words and it'll actually take the pronunciations for those words it'll feed them into that same type of sequence to sequence model and then you can actually input something like uh, tenme, which again is actually not an actual English word, it's a non-dictionary English word. And then it'll output the pronunciation for tenme, which in this case it outputs T-A-E-M-M-E-Y. 
I'll talk about exactly how this type of uh, this type of uh, pronunciation is structured in just a moment inside of the Mac part. But this is a simplified explanation of the system we're going to be building. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about sequence to sequence models, I'll have an entirely separate video about that coming out soon. Uh, but essentially, there are basically two LSTMs stacked on top of each other with an encoder and a decoder uh, in order to actually take in a sequence. And instead of classifying that sequence, it'll actually output another sequence based off of the sequence that you gave as input. But now let's get over to the Mac part where I'll show you how you can use TensorFlow in order to build the system behind me. It has quite a few different use cases, like for example, uh, if you're unsure how to pronounce someone's name, you can actually feed it into the system or a specific word, uh, or a specific word that's not in the dictionary. Uh, and so now though, let's get to the Mac part where I'll show you how to build the system. All right, so welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to show you how you can actually build this LSTM system. All right, so now if I actually go over to this uh, Ubuntu machine I've got running over here, uh, as you can see, I've actually seen it into a directory uh, inside of my home directory called Models Tutorials RNN Translate. Uh, so if you actually go ahead and get over to github.com uh, slash uh, tensorflow slash models, you can see they've got an entire GitHub repository dedicated to tensorflow models that they've pre-built for you. Uh, and so if you go inside of here, you can see that there is a folder uh, called, or a file called translate.py inside of tutorials RNN translate. And so this is the file you're going to be using in order to create your sequence to sequence LSTM model. Of course, you could build your own sequence to sequence model either in TensorFlow or another language like or another SDK like uh, Keras. Uh, but for now, I will be going with this and maybe I'll show you how to actually build one from scratch in another video. But as you can see, getting back to the point over here, as I mentioned before, this script was actually originally created to actually convert English to French, and so it's an English to French translation system. However, I have modified this code to actually work so it can tell me how to pronounce things. In fact, here is a demo. If I were to actually go up over here, take this command, and run a decode with this script, I'll tell you exactly what that means in just a moment. Uh, but as you can see, it actually starts initializing uh, the, the script. Uh, and then once it initializes and once it loads the pre-trained uh, pronunciation model, uh, we should be good to go and ask it how to pronounce some stuff. All right, so we'll give that just one moment. Uh, okay, there you go. It's starting to read the model parameters. And in just a moment, as you can see, it gives us a prompt. Now, from here, I should be good to go and ask it to ask it how to pronounce something. Like, for example, tenme is not an English dictionary word, however, it is written in English. So, technically, I should be able to uh, say tenme inside of this prompt, click enter, and as you can see, it returns exactly what I had told you, tenme. Uh, now, if I were to actually go over to the CMU Pronouncing Dictionary website, uh, you can see uh, if I were to, or not the Wikipedia page, the official CMU Pronouncing Dictionary page, uh, you can see there are a few different types uh, of the CMU Pronouncing Dictionary, some with the lexical stress, some without, etc. However, it uses this specific phoneme set in order to, uh, to, in order to uh, convert uh, from, from words to pronunciations. You can actually see all the 39 phonemes uh, and how they're used and a translation. Uh, and so, for example, AA uh, is used in odd, uh, and the translation is AAD for odd to the phoneme. And so, ah is AA sound. And then, of course, you've got those examples for all of the other phonemes in the set. Now, if we were to go back over here to this data set, I'll show you one more demo in just a moment, but let's exit out of the demo by doing Control D. Now that we're out of the demo, let me show you a bit about the data that goes behind this. If I were to go into the data folder, as you can see, I should be able to actually nano the actual word data set. Now, I've actually made a few modifications to the CMU Pronouncing Dictionary, uh, which allows a sequence-to-sequence -sequence LSTM model to actually understand the data. So if I were to actually go ahead and open up the words file over here, as you can see, we've got a lot of individual words, and these words are, of course, from the CMU Pronouncing Dictionary. I can actually search up Tanme here, in fact, and theoretically, I shouldn't get anything. 
as you can see, Tanmay was not found, which means that is truly not in the Sami pronouncing dictionary. Uh, but moving on, as you can see, let's just say we were to take a random word here. Say uh, we had, uh, if I were to just go down here, maybe hello. Okay. You can see that there is a word hello here. Now, by default, the CMU pronouncing dictionary gives me this word, hello. However, I've tried training a sequence to sequence LSTM like this, and the sequence to sequence LSTM never learns how to pronounce uh, these words if you do not put spaces in between the letters. But why is that? Well, it's actually because of the way that the sequence to sequence LSTM model is coded. What happens is when you have spaces in between the characters, the entire sequence is equal to H, then an E, then an L, then an L, then an O. But if you do not have spaces in between, then the, then the entire sequence is just one element of H-E-L-L-O. And that means that it's not able to learn, meaning that, of course, it's not able to give us the correct output uh, in the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. However, when you put spaces, again, these are all different elements of a sequence which allow it to train properly. But after that, of course, I'm not going to save the changes there. But I'm going to go into the pronunciations file, and that was not the correct file. This is the correct file. Uh, as you can see, this just contains a bunch of pronunciations, and of course, the reason you don't need to put spaces in between every single letter here is because you're actually just putting spaces in between each individual phoneme for it to actually learn what types of characters get translated into what types of phonemes. And so, as you can see, this is actually, I mean, one, one more plus point about having a system like this is it's so much more versatile. Uh, meaning that if you've got non-dictionary word, you're not just putting a bunch of if-else statements for every single little rule that a pronunciation could have. What you're doing is you're taking a bunch of examples of how words are pronounced and you're training a neural network to understand how these words are pronounced. All right, so now that you've taken a look at that data, and also, by the way, just so you know, uh, the way that this data is structured makes the translate file think that it's actually still converting English to French, but the English is actually just a bunch of words, and the French is actually just a bunch of phonemes or pronunciations. Uh, and so that conversion uh, is done uh, just as if it's con being converted from English to French, because it's almost the exact same algorithm uh, to go for each. All right, but once you've got your data ready, and of course all of this data and code will be available in the description, then you're ready to actually train the model. In fact, this is actually quite a long command, so I already have this ready here. And so this is the command. What it'll do is it'll call the translate.py file, it'll pass it the data directory, the training directory, it'll give it the English vocabulary size, which is 40,000 in this case, and the French vocabulary size, which is 40,000 once more. And again, these are just default values. You can, of course, play around with these and see what gives you the best result. Uh, but then, of course, once you click Enter, it should actually start loading up TensorFlow, uh, creating these layers, and actually starting to train. Now, I'm going to immediately stop this, though, because I've already got it trained, and I don't want it to overwrite my trained model. However, once you are ready to go ahead uh, and actually test out your model, then just remove those vocabulary size arguments and change this to decode, so dash dash decode at the end. Click enter and it should actually go into something called decode mode. Now decode mode will actually tell the script that instead of encoding input and actually training the LSTM or the sequence to sequence model, you want to actually decode output from it. Uh, and so just give that one moment and we should be ready to go uh, and test out and do one more demo of the system. As you can see, uh, I trained this for 8,800 iterations. It, uh, it, uh, and so what happens is over time, you're, there's, a, there's a variable called the perplexity variable. Uh, or I guess if, if you're already familiar with something like loss, uh, it's, it's similar to that. It's basically how good your model is uh, at, 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 uh, at doing these sorts of pronunciation conversions. Uh, and so uh, I was able to reach a perplexity of 1.19, which is actually quite low, but you can get much, much lower if you were to train for many more iterations. Uh, in fact, I have gotten lower before. It's just that I wanted to train this uh, fresh for you. Uh, and so now, as you can see, I should be able to pass it in something else, like, for example, my last name. Uh, so back she, and then hope it, it uh, is able to give us the correct pronunciation. 
As you can see, it does back she, and it gives us the correct uh, pronunciation. If you're not sure if this is correct and you want to know if your model is doing nicely or if it's not doing nicely, you can actually go over to the CME Pronouncing Dictionary and take each phoneme, for example, AE over here. And what does AE sound like? Well, AE is used in the word at. Uh, and so as you can see, this is the translation from at to phoneme, which is AE and then a T. And so AE, we can, you know, successfully derive that AE would mean an at sound. So back she. And so as you can see, that is correct. Uh, and it was able to give us the correct pronunciation for the words that we gave it. Even though, again, these are not dictionary words. Uh, these are complete, these are words that it's never heard before. And yet it was able to correctly classify them and correctly tell us exactly what the pronunciation should be using a sequence to sequence model built on top of LSTMs. Alright, so that's all I had to share with you in this video today. Thank you very much for joining. I really do hope you're able to learn from this video and, of course, enjoy the video as well. If you believe that this could help anybody else you know, please do consider sharing the video and liking it as well if it did help you out. Uh, of course, so if you've got any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'd be glad to get back to you. Uh, and of course, you can also email them to me at tajimani.gmail.com or tweet it to me at tajimani. Of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do continue. Please do subscribe to the channel as it really does help out a lot. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content, please do turn on notifications by clicking the little bell icon beside the subscribe button as well. Thank you very much for joining in today. That's going to be it. Goodbye.